Well, you're right. I don't think the average person, as they're getting to the career stage of their life, wakes up and says that I want to be a funeral director. Um, but for those that do, and those that haven't been in the, in the family business per se, I think are drawn to it um, and w in what we've sometimes described as a vocation, you know, the clergy, and, and they know what, that's what they want to do. They want to help people. And I, th I feel strongly that that is why a lot of people get into this business for that desire to help people through difficult times. Um, but at the end of the day, um, an appropriately termed Worcester Business Journal, you know, the funeral home is a business. It just happens to be a different business where you're helping families in the darkest hour um, get through something very difficult. And, and the reason we chose to get into it is to do it a little bit differently um, and to create a different experience um, when equated with the word funeral because that, that part of the business needs to change. So I think the, the most, the, the, the biggest difference would probably be people would say cremation. And 25 years ago, cremation, the cremation rate, if you will, to be technical, was probably, you know, 10% of the families would choose cremation as their method of disposition, where traditional earth burial uh, was really what happened for most of the families. But with cremation rates in Massachusetts um, being around 50% as the preferred method, uh, that is the biggest change. So with that comes options that families may or may not be aware of. And as long as we do our job explaining to the families what those options are, then we can help plan them, help with them plan a life celebration event that properly, you know, honors, remembers, and celebrates, which is what we use here at our funeral home, that person's life. So with respect to cremation, that's probably been the biggest change. Um, but I think when you get down to it, the family's needs and desires have changed. You know, I think to your question, 25 years ago, when someone passed away, you knew exactly what was going to happen. There would be a wake, two to four and seven to nine, at the funeral home, or perhaps even at the person's house, followed by a funeral the next day, followed by the burial at the, at the cemetery where they had their, their lots. Today, we don't know when a family's walking through what they want. And a lot of times, they don't know what they want. But it's our job to really explain to them their options based on what uh, is available to them, uh, what they end up having. So um, the change is families' needs and, and their desires. And, and a lot of them have found that maybe we didn't want what we've always done in the past. We want it to a certain extent, but what can we do to, that's a little bit different? So. Uh, Part of the motivation behind why my brother Jim and our partner Dave Champa decided to open is that we saw that there was room for another funeral home in our community and surrounding areas, but at the fundamental level, we just wanted to do things differently as it related to losing someone that you loved. And without you having, you know, physically be here for a wake or a funeral, it's hard to describe, but we are focused squarely on making sure that the families that we serve and the guests that arrive have a truly positive experience when it comes to attending a service that we provide. And I think that word experience is, is important because no one enjoys going to a funeral home. It's just the reality that it's an, an uncomfortable environment. What do I do? What do I say? What's it going to be like? I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. So it has been our job to create an environment that welcomes those who are going to, to, to gonna come here and to pay their respects, but to do it in a way that maybe they want to stay around a little bit longer than planned and get to know that person a little bit more. So reinventing it means, I think very simply, listening more and more to the family as far as who that person was. What did they like to do? What were their interests? What made them tick? So that if we can pick up some very important points about that person's life, what can we then do to recreate that story when the funeral, act, funeral services actually start. And by that I mean, you know, we are a life celebration home, but we have different areas in this building that we are creating themes that reflect the person's life, whether it be hunting, fishing, golf, cooking. Um, there, is, there are different areas all throughout this house that when someone comes in, if they don't know the deceased, they will have a very good understanding of who, or she, who or he or she was by the time they leave. And, I think the biggest compliment that, that Jim, Dave, and I hear is that 
This place feels like a home. It doesn't feel like a funeral home. I've never been to anything like this before. When I die, I want to come here. You guys are doing things right. So it's not necessarily really changing the, the day-to-day of the funeral. It's just creating a better experience in a different environment.